Goodman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. And AM 630. 737 on the morning majority, and one Brian is back, one still away. Brian That's Wilson, right. welcome home. Thank you very much. <laughs> we get to talk to Stuart Varney this morning of the Fox Business Network. Good morning, Stuart. I was just saying you're my second favorite Brit next to Davy Jones. Oh, bad <laughs> news indeed. It Mary really Catherine. it really was. Here's uh, my... uh, look, I am of that generation. I, I believe you're the generation that watched the reruns. I <laughs> am, and yeah. I'm so glad that some TV executive decided to bring them to my generation. <laughs> Yes, it was a brilliant move, actually, wasn't it? That, that was a fine piece of marketing. Um, and I look, I, I grew up in that era. I grew up in Britain during that, the Beatles era. I was very much a part of it. And the news of his death is really sad at the age of 66. Yeah. Uh, We're going to be too, talking about that young. in just a minute. It's, uh, but, it, uh, yeah, you're right. Very sad. Well, it's also sad news about gas prices. <laughs> yeah, that's talk, talking uh, about really sad. Yeah, and so the, the energy secretary, Chu, was speaking to... A congressional uh, panel yesterday, and was asked, hey, listen, uh, is the goal of the energy secretary and the administration to bring gas prices down, given that that has a lot to do with the economy? Here's what you had to say. But is the overall goal to get our price? No, the overall goal is to uh, decrease our dependency on oil, to uh, to build and strengthen our economy, and to g- decrease our dependency on oil. What do you think, Stu? <laughs> that was a pretty unequivocal answer. Are you, is your goal to get gas prices down? No. It's to reduce oil dependency. Well, you know, that's not going to fly in an election year, is no, it? No, it's certainly not. Here's the president's point man, point man on energy saying, no, no we're, we're not interested in getting the, the price of gas down, even though it is spiking. No, 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 we've got other goals. Um, I think that was a political mistake. I think the president has to live with a, an energy team that's rooted in 2008 when global warming was more of an issue than it is today. And I think uh, the president and the administration will pay a price for that kind of comment. Tell me, though, let's talk about the real facts on the ground. As oil prices go up and gasoline prices continue to skyrocket, we're already seeing $4 gas, $5 gas in some places. Some people think that will become the norm across the country. What does that do to our economy? It slows it down. Uh, very simply, straight to the point, it slows it down. Because you're going to take tens of billions of dollars of spending power right out of the economy, and you're going to put tens of billions of dollars of cost onto businesses of all kinds. Prices go up, the economy slows, hiring uh, decisions get delayed, and the economy generally does not have the growth rate that it would have if you got uh, under $3 gas. It, that there is that direct equation, and there's almost certainly a direct correlation between rising gas prices and the president's approval rating. So, yeah, shown in the Gallup poll yesterday. Dead on, and that's my next question. If this is indeed important to the president of the United States, if showing the the country that the economy is getting better, and and that is going to become undone by higher gas prices, it would seem it would be in the best interest of the Obama administration to come up with policies that would lower the price of gas, and yet you have the Secretary of Energy, a Nobel Prize winner who is on Capitol saying, no, that's not our policy at all. It's astonishing. It is astonishing. Uh, I think the president will pick a fight with the oil companies. He makes a speech today in New Hampshire. Energy is the main theme of that speech. And uh, I am told by our correspondents in Washington that he is going to take direct aim at the oil companies, blame them, insist on the removal of oil company subsidies and heavier taxation, and pin the blame on the oil companies and on the situation in Iran without coming up with any policy that will get prices down or at least under control in the near term. I know it's, it's sort of fun and easy for politicians to blame oil companies. They're an easy villain, speculators, the same thing. The FTC has done studies in the past and found that you know there's no grand conspiracy of oil companies jacking up prices. What is the role of the oil companies and the speculators? How much blame do they deserve? I don't think they deserve any blame at all. I think I'll, I'll make two points. This is a story about supply and demand and expected supply and demand. Right. Prices are rising now because there is an expectation of a supply shortage in the future because of the Iran-Israel-America situation. Okay, So that's supply and demand and expected supply and demand. 
then you've got to take issue with the, the idea that speculators are causing this. I think that the word speculator is all wrong because that, that's become an evil word. Right. What speculators are doing is they are placing their bets on the future price of a commodity, oil. You and I speculate if we buy a stock because we expect it to go up. Are we evil speculators? No. A lot of the speculators in the actual oil market are airlines, for example, who want to depend upon the price of oil at a given time in the future. So they're speculating by buying now, thinking the price will go up in the future, so they can supply their airline at the right price. They're not playing an evil role. They're a very necessary role in our economy. Uh, you know, it, it, to blame the oil companies, to blame the speculators, is just picking a fight for political reasons. You think you can win the fight because speculators and oil companies are unpopular. Right. That does not solve the problem. If you go after the oil companies and you say take away their subsidies, what you do is you decrease the incentive for the oil companies to go out and do the one thing that could bring oil prices down, go out and get more oil. Yeah, uh, don't they need solid profits to do all this drilling that we want them to do and that they want to do? Tell me, Brian, can you tell me how raising taxes on an industry makes that industry produce more yeah. of its basic product? Well, it does not. Listen, I'm from West Texas, and I come from a part of the country where the, the only reason that that town exists is because there is oil, and I've scratched my head for years that people don't understand how the oil industry works. Very easy to point at the oil companies and say they're evil and, and that we shouldn't subsidize what you basically do when you when you attack the oil companies is you take away their incentive to do the one thing that can solve the problem. Precisely. And if you say that the answer to all our problems is algae, you run a great risk <laughs> yeah. of being ridiculed. Yeah. Uh, How'd that Solyndra thing work out for you? Yeah. Algae is just round the back. There's tons of it. Here we oh go. Lord. Stuart, let me ask you about Keystone. Uh, Keystone XL, of course, not going forward because the president says, eh, uh, the company, TransCanada, has determined that it can still build... I call it Keystone Extra Small, a, sp a part of that pipeline. Uh, what difference would that make in the flow of oil in markets? It, it would not all? bring Canadian oil to America, right. point number one. It would uh, alleviate the bottleneck of oil that uh, crops up in, in, um, in, in parts of Oklahoma, Cushing. Uh, by the way, that's the place where the oil, a lot of the oil is stored. This pipeline would link Cushing with ports uh, in the south and refineries in Texas. That's what it would do. But it does not bring in any other oil into the United States of America, period. Well, regardless of what happens with that oil from Cushing, I look forward to the president congratulating himself from not stopping them from doing that. <laughs> He'll take full credit for whatever happens, I'm sure. <laughs> I think he will, and you'll be able to see it at, I believe, one forty Eastern time this afternoon from his speech in New Hampshire. All right. Stuart Varney from the Fox Business Network. Always a pleasure, Stuart. Thanks for joining us.